Oh, okay, so I was dumb. I was dumb. Hey, yo, I'm toasted. Uh, ideas and today I wanted to react to another video but this video is going over a thing in the in Amsterdam with a new red light district being built quote-unquote a little bit confusing but you know what we're, we're gonna learn we're, we're gonna learn okay I'm kind of questioning as to what this is all gonna be about I have no, no idea what's happening in Amsterdam other than the fact that the red light district exists in there, but aside from that, I don't know. This is the design of Amsterdam's new erotic center. Commissioned by the city government in 2020, it's a concept for a 5,000 square meter high rise with hotel rooms, offices, bars, entertainment facilities, a store, and a restaurant. When it's finished, it will be one of Europe's largest and most advanced brothels. And as interesting as its design are the locations that it's being considered for. Locations on the outskirts of the city. So why did Amsterdam's government commission the design of this new building? Why at locations far from its historic red-lit center? And why are people so angry? Back in 2009, a labor politician waited. The city was voting on a plan he had spearheaded a plan called Project 1012. Named after the zip code of the city's most notorious red light district, it was designed to clean it up. Low quality buildings, such as window brothels and coffee shops had to go, but instead of making new regulations, the lawmaker was praised for a unique approach. His solution was spatial, buy up buildings associated with crime and push crime away. The city government was convinced and his plan would pass. Little did they all know, it would soon collapse. Over the course of more than a decade, it would lead to the closure of more than 100 individual window brothels, along with tens of individual coffee shops. However, when attempts were made to measure the impact of Project 1012, not much could be found. It had a marginal impact on crime, and today the center's image as an adult theme park with shady edges still remains strong. But if there's one thing his plan did do, was that it created a rift among hundreds of sex workers in the city government of Amsterdam. You know, I, I don't live in this realm of the world, obviously. I, so I had no idea that this was actually happening or, or, or stuff like this was going around. Granted, I could also just be completely re forgetting about 2015. There's a good chance of that. But I was, I was still on the internet, so... I would have, I would, I'd feel like I would have heard about this, but perhaps not. Perhaps that's also just not my uh, realm of YouTube at that time, which could very well be true. But kind of interesting to learn that this was happening. So they were trying to essentially get rid of the red light district by moving in uh, more just regular stores that aren't a part of the Red Lake District, trying to move them out via doing that, like, through, like, herding, or, like, such like that. Anywho, so, what I'm getting is now their plan is to build a building to put the Red Lake District, two buildings to put the Red Lake District into my first question is, is that, are those buildings going to be big enough for that? That, like, because the red light district, uh, from what I can assume on that map, it, it doesn't look small. So I'm questioning if it's even going to be big enough to be able to house all of that. And at that same rate, how is that going to work for uh, customers? How is that going to partake? Anywho and tries to change the center even more. In 2020, the city government banned organized tours of the red light district. In May of 2023, bans on cannabis within the district entirely. There's also been mandated bar closures, bans on the sale and display of alcohol, and even ad campaigns targeted towards young to middle-aged British men. She and the executive body have even floated the idea of banning international tourists from buying marijuana in the city entirely. 
She's also brought up the idea of introducing entrance gates to the red light. Did not know that Trump had infiltrated in Amsterdam. This is news to me, but I mean, hey, if he's able to build a wall in a different country, then... I mean, by all means, I guess, but... Interesting idea. I don't know how building a, a wall... Uh, trapping... The Red Light District would change. I think the I think the interesting thing is how they're trying to get rid of the red light district. I, I wouldn't I once again I don't know An Amsterdam, I don't know why they would be getting rid of that. Is the red light district not like a a good chunk of change for Amsterdam? Is that why? Like they don't they don't get profit from the red light district, which I, I, I would doubt, but why are they trying to get rid of it so much? Is it because it's like a stain on their name or something like that? Hmm. Uh, anywho. This would create the first physically regulated neighborhood in a major European city. Not even Venice does that. But her most controversial suggestions started soon after her nomination in 2019, when she brought attention towards changing the rooms in the red light district again. In Amsterdam, there are actually three separate red light districts. Oh, interesting. I, I actually didn't know that. I, I thought it was just one thing. Why? Why would it then be called district and not districts? Why? Why? Why make it singular? That's actually kind of confusing. But I mean, my point from earlier, like looking at the map from out here, like it, it seems like a pretty large pretty large thing, including the other parts of the red light district. So how would the two buildings be able to conglomerate those two things into two buildings? How, how does that work? Is there, I, I, don't, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Zout is the poshest and most entitled area of Amsterdam and offers two plots, the Groene Zoom, a 2000 square meter triangular piece of land, and then a second, likely the preferred option, a 21,500 square meter plot of land owned by the city government directly. Unlike the singular ferry connection in Noort, Zout has access to two metro connections. One that goes from north to south, giving potential clients from the center immediate access, and it also has a metro going from east to west, granting direct access to Amsterdam's business district. What it loses in being a hip and chill place to be it gains in accessibility. It also has ample parking space. However, what both North and Zout still have in common is that there are NIMBYs. Homeowners have voiced concerns about noise, criminality, and impact on children in the area. Some sex workers have also voiced concerns about their own safety. According to the city government, the building will likely be a safer option than the status quo. Instead of sparse, separated buildings in an overcrowded neighborhood, a single building would have a centralized security system with a clear oversight over oh so the red light district is like sparse it's not it's not just one like strip of line lines of buildings it's it's sparse whereas in the building it's all going to be collective okay okay so now okay now it's okay it's making a lot more sense now as to how the building would work so kind of it's kind of interesting if i i i i think if i was in their position i would be choosing the the uh hold on i gotta go back to look at this map if i were in this decision i i would probably go with this one probably this one because this one is going to um, uh, reflect bad on the government for turning a well, what i assume to be just a grassland into a sex industry building uh, so I, I i would personally think that this is the better option and yeah i mean so here's a question so does the red light district bring in negative, whereas the rich suburbs of Amsterdam bring in the highs of society, where they don't 
rob and steal and such. So how would those two things interact? We got, we got like, I guess the lows of society being the red light district, supposedly. And then we got the highs of the rich people who don't steal. How do those two things interact? That'd be kind of interesting to learn about. I'm not going to take the time to learn about it because it's kind of boring to learn about that. But I don't know. Kind of an interesting to think about thing to think about. Anywho. It also has ample parking space. However, what both North and Zout still have in common is that there are NIMBYs. Homeowners have voiced concerns about noise, criminality, and impact on children in the area. Some sex workers have also voiced concerns about their own safety. According to the city government, the building will likely be a safer option than the status quo. Instead of sparse, separated buildings in an overcrowded neighborhood, a single building would have a centralized security system with a clear oversight over who enters and who leaves. The erotic center does what Project 1012 couldn't, it gets rid of rooms in the center, but without pushing sex workers into an unregulated underground. Also, unlike the Vala, which mixes tourists with potential clients, the new building is meant to attract primarily the clients. Some sex workers have complained that over-tourism has reduced their incomes because large crowds make actual potential clients too self-conscious to consume. According to the city government, a well-connected but more isolated building would reduce the attraction of the red light district for tourists attract more clients than in the center, increasing sex workers' incomes, but it would also be quieter. Tourists are loud, but clients are the type of people who want to be private and have as little- Oh, okay, so I was dumb. I was dumb, okay. So as I stated, uh, as I stated, I didn't realize that the buildings were sparse out, but yeah, the, the tourist impact of the red light district would most definitely uh, lower the profit of being an SW in the red light district. So, ah, uh, man, the more the video goes on, the more I'm actually like, this is actually a very smart idea. Uh, like, no, that, that I, I mean that genuinely, like, it is a very smart idea because it brings in the clients that it brings in, whereas it doesn't turn away the clients who would be, but it aren't due to public uh discourse so the way i'm looking at it now is this is a very smart idea uh as for amsterdam it in and of itself being a, a part of the world that is like yes please more brothels i don't know how it's going to look in the public eye from that perspective but this, uh, just on the part of the red light district, this is a very smart idea to build this building. A very smart idea, because it, it, uh, from what I see, or granted, could just be the perspective of how the video is viewing this, but from the, what, what I see, this is nothing but a benefit to do this. So, yeah, it seems like a good idea. A little attention drawn to them as possible. However, this is also where some more difficult problems emerge. The Vola, with all of its issues, still has a unique advantage. It has a lot of eyes on the street. In the same way that it may make some clients too self-conscious to consume, it may do the same for more serious criminals. And this is where you get the NIMBYs. Homeowners would like a building that's as invisible as possible. This is why the mayor has also promised a closed, isolated building that brings very little attention. However, the more isolated and quiet the area, the more concerns about sex workers' safety. Also, the city already has problems with the number of police and security. Since the Vala isn't entirely removed, by building an erotic center, you end up producing a fourth red light district, which potentially spreads an already thin police force even thinner. So the mayor has had problems. She's faced considerable backlash at town halls, and she's had to postpone making decisions on the erotic center. However, since 2021, Halsma has had a majority in the government. People can postpone and argue all they want, but all three parties, GroenLinks, D66, and PvdA, have agreed, be it an isolated building, cruise ship floating pavilion, north or in south. Some rooms in the Vala must be removed, and instead, they must come somewhere new. From what we just watched, I think overall, although there aren't those negatives, I think I think overall it'll turn into a more positive than a negative. 
and as they stated due to it being a, an actual building it'll be a lot easier to turn away those who shouldn't be there so i think i think it'll be more positive than it will negative but granted i don't live in i don't live in amsterdam so i don't know what their concerns are i don't i don't i don't know any of that so it is kind of just a whole bunch of guesswork but i don't think i i think it'll just be nothing but positive with the buildings because i mean it 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 gets a lot it gets rid of a lot of that public view thing so or so outsider view outsider tourist view people who aren't looking to purchase sw so i think it's nothing but benefit because it, it drives up profit supposedly and it also just gets rid of the negative in those big districts which i think is an overall benefit but once again i don't live there so i don't know what their concerns are i know what my concerns are which may not align with theirs so i could be completely talking out of my booty hole here anywho tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments what, what do you think about the uh building what do you think about them building a building for this whole entire thing and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button, become a fellow bread bag, and also hit that like button so that people who may not have seen this video can see this video, and so that they might join the bread box. Because once again, we need more bread. Got it? Good. But anywho, I hope to see you in the next video, and until then, have a good one.